turns out that stripping women of their bodily autonomy, not a popular position to have. And when politicians who have supported abortion bans are confronted about their past statements in support, they like to run away, like Christy Nome, governor of South Dakota. I love this story because it shows you how terrified they are of having to acknowledge their own record, the policies that they champion and support. And so this all happened at an event at some sort of a golf course. She shows up and she's greeted by two constituents in her state. And when the constituents tell her about their own experiences with abortion and ask her questions about why it is that as a woman, she doesn't think that other women should be able to control their own bodies, again, she runs away. Within minutes of touching down for an appearance at a virtual golf facility in Sioux Falls, the top Republican in the state bailed upon being pressed by the women on their personal abortion stories and the dangerous new reality after Roe v. Wade. So she was confronted by two women, one of whom, by the way, literally drove across the state when she found out that Christy Nome was gonna show up at this event. Leah Bothamley and Tiffany Campbell support abortion rights and disagree with Nome's support for a ban on most abortions in South Dakota. The measure went into effect immediately after the US Supreme Court issued its Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization ruling that overturned Roe on June 24th. Now, Bothamly, as I mentioned earlier, is the one who drove across the state once she found out that the governor was gonna be at this event. She called out her name, meaning Christy Nome's name, and approached Nome and then said, I want my rights back, which she said she repeated about five times. Uh, Nome couldn't take that, didn't like that. Campbell said that she walked up, shook hands with the governor and engaged in a short dialogue, asking a technical question about the state's abortion law. She has her own abortion story, having obtained one to end a pregnancy on September 20 of 26, uh, 2006. Campbell said she was pregnant with twins and was told she could not carry both to term as NPR had actually reported back in 2008. And so uh, she wanted to make a point about how if she needed that abortion today under state law, it would be very unlikely that she would be granted that abortion. And Christy Nome disagreed because she says, no, no, our abortion ban makes exceptions for the life of the mother, except Abortion doctors are so terrified of the legal liability associated with providing any of these services that they turn women away. They don't even risk it. So effectively, there is a total abortion ban in states like South Dakota. And when the women were talking to her, she didn't like it, couldn't take the heat. And so we have a snippet of her basically running away like the coward that she is. Let's watch. And you know, something that's been coming up over and over again in reading about Christy Nome's leadership is how she is very inaccessible to her own constituents. She doesn't like to have public events, she doesn't like to talk to voters in the state. And you can understand why. It's really difficult to do so when you can't even defend your own positions. Yeah. So look, you get into these type of situations when the politicians only talk to donors. And that's what Christy Nome is. An excellent case of that. So she won't do town halls. She's only doing one debate with her opponent. She doesn't. She wants to limit the number of times she's seen in public, and she's asked hard questions or any questions. Well, this is a democracy. You're supposed to be the representative of the people, and so that's why people are getting frustrated. And you're going to a public event. They came, and they're the public, and they ask you questions, and so. She could have just answered a bunch of their questions and then said, okay, look, I answered enough. Now I'm gonna go do the event and that would have been normal, right? No, she ran away from the event completely. And then the guy putting the event together was just crying and crying about it. Put out this statement about how uh, that it was all the protesters fault. And how dare they question their re- that someone who was elected to be their representative, how dare they? And then they had this hilarious line in the letter that I wanna read you guys. Having a six year old go home upset and in tears because she didn't get to talk to her governor about horses is not how this night should have gone. 
Is it? I mean, is that the most important question for the governor to get? If the governor was accessible and she had given people an opportunity and heard them out on policy issues, then she wanted to talk to a six year old about horses, great. Fantastic, but if the only question she's willing to entertain is a question about horses from a six year old, that's why you have confrontations like the one you just saw. Yeah, that's exactly right. And after she ran away from her own constituents and refused to answer their questions, she had a spokesperson release a statement about how she's actually a wonderful governor who's very, very accessible to her constituents. And I wanna talk about that real quick. Gnome's fellow Republican Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden, who was also present but did not speak with the women. Although at one point he did hold up a hand to indicate someone apparently Bothamly should be quiet, she refused, so there's that. But here, here's the statement from Ian Furry, uh, statement to the Daily Beast. He clarified uh, that he says that Nome listened to Campbell, clarified some facts and then told her Let's have the debate this legislative session. He said Noam tried to make it clear that she never supports a bill before she's seen specific language of the bill. Remember, Christy Noam is also the right wing governor who signed a trans athlete ban in school sports and then failed to mention a name of a single trans athlete who inspired the legislation in the state of South Dakota. Because it's all theater, that's all it is with Republican lawmakers. It's all manufactured culture wars, it's all theater. It's all meant to distract you from the fact that they love to rob you or help their donors rob you. And in the meantime, if there are some casualties involved in this whole manufactured culture war, oh well, too bad. But don't dare to ask them any questions about it. Because if you do, apparently you're somehow the bad guy. If you're trying to ask your elected lawmakers, elected governor, any question about their leadership, how dare you? You're the bad guy. It's amazing. Yeah, and um, and by the way, casualties is quite literal because uh, there was, look, if Christy Noem wanted to just say, hey, look, I don't comment on a bill until I see the specifics of the bill, that's a weaselly excuse. Because you, you already know your abortion stance. Yeah. It's not like it's news to you. And then we're gonna read the bill and go, oh, I changed my abortion stance. But at least it's a legitimate Weasley answer, right? But she, on top of that, lied to the uh, citizen that you saw there. And that's, and that's, she said, the, the person asking her questions said, that's what made her so angry, that was the lie. Because Christy Noem says there's already uh, something in there to protect the life of the mother. But the, Woman was telling her, wait, no, this question isn't about the life of the mother. The doctors told me that if I didn't have this procedure, both of the twins would die. So I did the procedure, which would now be illegal. And one of the boys survived, just like the doctor said, he's 15 years old now. And he wouldn't be alive today if this bill passes and has passed and is in effect, right? And and she's and Noam was basically like, no. The bill covers that. No, the bill doesn't cover that. You're definitely wrong. You've seen the specifics of the bill, you're in favor of it, and it doesn't cover that. And that's why you shouldn't interfere with a woman and her doctor. But Christy Noem is in favor of big government and government tyranny that gets between you and your doctor and limits your freedom. So she should just be honest about that and say, I don't think women should have the same freedom. I just don't think that. I think the zygote is more important than the woman. Just say it, be honest, and let's move on. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.